so I've got this top beam this is the first tie beam that I've done this this beam here I'm now just going to put do a dry fit and see if those go together at the top there and um, this is the only one I could do here because this piece going across which is this one here with the braces in is only three meters wide well three points three point one and this room is four meters wide so the, the the other ones I can't do the other ones I have to do on site because those are five meters obviously my room's only four meters so I'm just going to do this one Just trying to get rid of rubbish from the workshop. Easy way of getting rid of all this sawdust. Welcome back um, to part four. Before the new year break, this is where I left off. I had this. This is the top beam and the back angled piece, the back corner top beam. I have them all um, ready to cut the mortise out. But just before I do that, you can see here there's a bit, there's, there's an eighth of an inch, uh, sorry, a quarter of an inch wider than seven inches. So I just need to cut that down. I'm going to cut down, I've got the router bit. It's sticking out a quarter of an inch there and um, I'm just going to cut off this corner here with the router and it should fit nice and snug. Well, I've got that corner cut, nice and tight, nice and tight everywhere, cut down the thickness there, and now I just need to cut the pocket, a bit nerve wracking because you've got a big knot here, um, but it seems to only be down to about here, so there's quite a bit of meat, so fingers crossed. Got this joint fitting nicely, got the pocket going through both of them, it's very bright. This piece here, this three meter piece here has arrived and another five and a half meter length. So I'm going to be working on this side and this side. Okay, we're roasting, we're roasting again. I'm going to put this big on pallet on. Ah, you can put your grid on there. Well, when the subscribe to the channel. So I'm just cutting two angled pieces here. I can't figure it out. I've been looking on my phone on the SketchUp thing, trying to figure out the angles. Very complicated angles. This is the piece I'm cutting. I've got all the measurements here. Um, the only thing is it doesn't have any angle, so I went home, I got the angle, and I got my protractor. It's run out of battery because it's an electric one. Anyway, I couldn't figure out, I was writing it down, and it just wasn't working out. And I realised all my maths were coming wrong because this isn't 7 inch, this timber here is about 6 and 3 quarter inches. So... You know, I kept trying to get a square mark from corner end to end and it just wasn't working out. So I put all the measurements on a little card. I cut on a little board. I cut this seven inch square 
and then I got those measurements from there stuck on here and as long as I get this line lining up with the edge whatever's left that's where I need to cut so it took some time it took ages to be honest but uh, we're there now we're there so I'm gonna cut it now So, um, it turns out I actually had a protractor at home. I forgot all about this. I, um, the way I cut it was actually perfect. See, I've got this set 126 degrees. Get that on there. That is bang on. Phew! Check that. It's not even a gap. That is sweet. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut that thickness into there so that sits on that. Get that one done, and then we're on the other side. See how this joint comes together it's half lap and a weird half lap um there's a bit of a gap there i just need to cut a bit of that side there because you can see here it's like a, it's overlapping like five mil or a bit less so i just need to cut that same distance off there so it fits in Well, that was nice and easy, you know, I could have faffed about trying to cut that down, chiseling it. Anyway, that's perfectly smooth, that. I just need to cut that bit off because this timber here is a bit less than six inch. And this is seven inches, so that's... This is a bit less than seven inches, like seven and six and three quarter. So that's like a quarter of an inch there, which I just need to take off. So I'm going to come finish that off after the weekend. It's Friday, early day. I like to finish early. Don't like to work Friday as it is, but I have to do something. So I'm gonna leave it for now. So next week hopefully I need to figure out how to do a scarf joint. I've never done a scarf joint before. But just like all of this, it's my first time, so um doing the scarf joint will be the first time and I'll do well. Please God. So see how it goes. Alright, God bless, have a good weekend. Thought it's snowing. Can't feel it, but it's actually really cold out apparently. Standing next to this thing, you don't feel anything. So this is that uh, beam with a funny with a funny angle on it. That's one side. This is the other side. It's got a 60 mil square hole. We didn't do 70 mil, but it's going too close to the end. I've got here. I've got the tenon cut all the way through, and two pinholes. It's not come out bang on, but two pinholes here. I'm gonna get rid of this now because. This piece is totally done. This piece, that piece there is totally done. That piece there is totally done. I'm now gonna do this piece, but I will need this piece, which is this, to be able to do a dry fit afterwards. So I'm just, I'm gonna get rid of it. That back piece there, I'm gonna put away totally so I can work. Um, 
and then I need to pull the next five meter piece out. So um, I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I'm doing that last um, top beam. Instead of me measuring how much I need to cut out, I've just I've already got this piece ready cut. You know, this one with the funny, funny uh, thing at the side. So I've already got this side cut as well. This side is copy of that side, and I know that side works because I've tried it. And this is exactly the same. So I've just clamped them together and then just marked them out like this. And then I just need to get that thickness there at the bottom and cut that much out on those lines. And then it's done. It's easy. I don't need to measure it and it fits. can't actually believe it I've cut every single joint on this timber frame besides for the sill plates I'm still debating whether to cut them here or on site but uh, this was the last piece these are the last two pockets I've got some brace pockets underneath and now scarf joints so I've got this piece of um, flooring I'm just going to use this for my template So this is a 7.1 meter length, there's a 5.5 .5 and a 2, uh, uh, it's a bit, a bit more than, but by the time I've done this, I'm losing 5, basically 600 on each side. That's that piece there from there to there. So I'm going to do a scarf joint. Now, I've never done one before, so please don't judge me if I get it wrong. Um, that's my piece. I'm going to cut it out there. I hope I got the right tools, but if not, whatever, you know what I mean? We'll just have to make it work. So it's quite exciting. I'm going to start on this timber here and then, yeah, we'll move on.
Okay, so I've done that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the other one, stick them together, and then I'm going to stick a saw in between and um, smooth it out. quite struggling here. I'm really struggling with this scarf joint. So I've got it cut. I clamped them because the things aren't square. Um, but then, you know, I've got this gap, so I clamp them down. And then when I get rid of it, I whack the wedges in and it's all tight. And then the second I take those clamps off, it just sort of opens up. So. Just can't figure it out. Well, I got it working. Just make sure these are here. I think before I wasn't I wasn't uh, sent, uh, sending them home tight enough. It's working. The joint works. Finally, I had a lot of problems with it. There's just a lot of shaving down. Um, I couldn't be bothered filming it because it's just a pain. Um, but for now, I've got one done. I think the next ones, I'm gonna do a sort of a half lap one with pins in them. They're just a bit easier to cut. I had a lot of trouble on this. And um, if it does fail, I don't have any spare wood. So I wanna do something which is definite. So obviously nothing's definite, but it's definitely easier. And it's a different joint to try. So we always love trying new joints. I'm gonna tidy up here. I've got just those two joints to cut in this. And that's gonna be the end of part four. And in the next part, I'm gonna be taking all the other stuff, all the stuff over to, um, to, the, to the building site. So if you don't wanna miss that, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification button. So you get notified when I put my next video out. If you have anything to say, throw it in the comment section below. You'd know the drill. Well, there you go. That is my first piece that I have scarf jointed. Got another two to do. Nice and flush on this side. This is the reference side and the timbers are two different size timbers. So you see nice and flush, nice and tight, nice and tight down there. Um, I've had to make a very weird brace here. It's got a very small tenon compared to all the others because I didn't measure it right and I ended up being on that scarf joint. So. 
in order to be away from the scarf I just cut the tenon down a little bit and made the hole a bit smaller you can see that's a normal tenon I've just cut this one down so it's just that much smaller than uh, this is that much smaller than a normal one but it goes in nicely comes to the right place yeah that's this done I think that's going to be it for part four this you see is the outside of the cabin and that's an overlap so it's just uh, overlapped by 500 mil so yeah that's it for part four thank you so much for watching and being patient with me thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed watching um, please subscribe and press that bell notification so you get notified the next time i put a video up and um, thank you for watching god bless